Have you ever set up an approval process in Salesforce? If you have, you're probably not a huge fan. The old tool was pretty bad and it has not been updated for a very long time. The administrators have been asking for a revamped tool for years. Now, the product teams have listened to our feedback and gave us a brand new tool with Spring 25 release. This tool is orchestration based. It's called the flow approval process tool. Now, I know you are going to ask whether this tool is going to be free or not, because we know orchestrations are free to use for up to 600 runs per year. They get deducted off your usage-based entitlements, and after 600 runs, you need to buy additional runs from your account executive. These approvals are based on a different type of orchestration that don't get deducted off your usage-based entitlements, which means they are entirely free. This product is ideal for sophisticated multi-step approval processes. The way you set up orchestrations is a little bit counterintuitive. You first need to set up your flows and you stitch those flows together using the orchestration tool. Now, Salesforce gave us a screen flow template that you can use for your approval step. Go ahead and start off with that template, build all the flows necessary, and then bring them together using the orchestration tool. Let me give you an example. What are approval processes? Businesses can approve or decline certain tickets and records depending on their business rule set. Like there are certain scenarios where one department will create a record and will send it to another department or the executive team for approval. And then they can approve or decline that record, adding their comments to the record as well as part of this process. A good example would be if your business does on-site repairs for equipment and assets, uh, certain customers and certain clients would be entitled to a free on-site repair and certain others wouldn't. And you know, you wouldn't want possibly your call center agents to make that decision. For higher cost items, you would bounce that off to another team or the executive team for that record or the ticket to be approved. So this can be on a case, on a custom object, or it can also be on the business or sales side for the opportunities. Now, in this use case, what I'm doing is I'm triggering an approval process whenever somebody creates an opportunity that's bigger than $10 million, right? Maybe this is a multinational and publicly traded company, and they want to keep their pipelines very accurate and tight. And if one of the sales agents enters a big whale, a big opportunity, that could corrupt their reports, right? You know, they want to make sure that the executive team uh, or the next in line should approve that opportunity. Now, I have set up this process here. I have a large opportunity here that's for an $11 million. I mean, this approval process triggers on create. I'm going to clone this record here and I'm going to call it upsell large opportunity 21 this time. Let me leave the amount the same. So when I do that, what happens is you see there's a work guide item that appears on the record for this user. By the way, the reason why I'm seeing this record is I am the user designated to approve this process. And this is a screen flow that shows an approve or reject radio here. And along with a long text area window for the user to enter their decision comments. So I'm just going to go ahead and approve this record and write in the decision comments, um, just simply approved. And when I click finish, this work guide item section will disappear. Now, the record moved along in the process. And as part of this new approval process, flow-based approval process, I am also creating a task that shows on the record that this opportunity has been approved. 
And as you can see, I have also added here a comment on the bottom that shows the um, opportunity has been approved. This actually comes from uh, the decision comments that the user entered, the user who approved the record. All right, so let me just show you how this is achieved. Now, first of all, let me tell you, this is actually the brand new approval process that just launched with Spring 25. It's flow-based, it's orchestration-based, and it actually brings a lot of capabilities and possibilities with it. So to see what process governs that, I can just go to my flow list view. I have already filtered here my orchestrations. I included the word orchestration in my flow label and I'm filtering for those. Now this is a record triggered orchestration that triggers based on an opportunity being created with one condition. Now remember, this is a certain type of orchestration that is entirely free. Usually orchestrations are free up till 600 runs a year. After that, you would have to buy additional usage-based licenses for your orchestrations. But these approval orchestrations do not get deducted of your usage-based entitlements. So they are entirely free. Here, let me just go into my start element and show you that this starts when a record is created, right? And when the amount is greater than $10 million. So what does the orchestration do? Orchestrations consist of stages and steps. Each stage has to have at least one step, can have multiple. And each step will consist of actions. These could be background actions or screen actions. In this particular approval-based orchestration, it is only natural that we add actually a screen flow that's made out of a template that's best suited for the approval step. And I'll show you where that template is. And I'll, I'll also show you how I built this flow here. Now, under these parameters and settings, you are going to choose who the approver is going to be. Your choices are user group, queue, or these can be also user resource, group resource, and queue resource. So the assignee could be actually a variable value that you can assign. In this case, this is hard-coded. And you can actually customize the email that goes out to the user for the approval step. Uh, the user will, by default, get a standard email that has a link to the record because um, the record page layout is where the work item will appear for the user to do their approval. They can also approve by replying to the email, by the way. And then here, I'm actually scoping this approval step to the record where um, this work item is going to appear. So it's going to appear on this opportunity um, record page layout. And I have to also make sure that I add the work item uh, lightning component to the page layout. I can decide there uh, as well whether that work item uh, lightning component should show when there is no work item to show for uh, or it should be hidden. In my case, I actually chose to hide it. I can decide whether the record needs to be locked. Um, and then I can also decide whether I need to allow the approver to edit the record for possible corrections. And here is the interesting thing. Here is where the possibilities also get interesting. I can decide um, to complete this step when the assigned user has completed the action, or I can also choose among other choices, one of which could be, for example, when the specified requirement is met, or when the specified evaluation flow returns true. So I can actually build a sophisticated auto-launched uh, flow. Um, and when this flow 
returns the value true, then this step is going to be considered completed. So this can actually get quite sophisticated. In my case, I did not choose to do that. So after this stage and step finishes, I'm checking whether the decision by the user is an approval or not. So this is a decision where I'm checking the output uh, coming from that screen flow in step 1.1 and see whether that's an approve. Now, uh, the uh, standard template for the approval screen flow has a um, pick list, a string, in fact, a text that returns the word uh, approve when the record is approved. So you need to be checking for that. You, you're checking for a text. It's not going to be a Boolean. And that actually field is called approval decision. It starts with all small letters and only the D is capitalized here, right? So it, it has to be in a particular way. If you're not using the template, you can create your own screen flow, but it would have to have an output named approval decision here. And you'll see there are two outputs. The other one is for approval comments. So that's the one that captures the text that the user will enter. And once the record is approved, I can actually send it to another user, another queue, another group for another approval step under certain conditions, or choose to just create, for example, a task record, which I have done here. So that's actually done. That's the power of orchestration. That's actually done with the use of a auto launch flow. So this auto launch flow receives two inputs. Uh, one is the approval comments that comes from step 1.1, the screen flow, and the other one is the opportunity ID itself. And it's going to create a task and associate that task with that opportunity. And um, remember, uh, let me also just remind you that um, for the start of the step, I get to also use either conditions or even an auto launch flow to decide whether this step should start or not. And the other power of orchestrations is that the orchestrations can run things in parallel as well. So that's another power that we can use of orchestrations. Now, here is the difference between the approval orchestration and the regular orchestration. When you are in orchestration builder and you want to add a step, let me just show you here, you are going to see a background step and a UI step, like a screen flow step. But here, the only screen flow step that you can set up is called an approval step, right? So. So it's um, going to be limited to approval interactions. In terms of background steps, you are um, more flexible, so you can actually add those using an auto launch flow here. And the orchestrations nowadays also have a MuleSoft step, if you choose to add a MuleSoft step in your orchestration. So that's how this one is built. But remember, though, this is going to be kind of counterintuitive. You have to build these flows first, and then you're going to come back here and then finalize your orchestration. And here is my approval request orchestration. Before I go into that, let me just show you where the template is. So if you go to new flow, and then you decide to use a template, and you can see under templates, approval workflow, evaluate approval request. If you click on that one, you're going to create an evaluate approval request flow here. So of this template. And this one actually comes with these required variables already created. Good thing for you. And you know, you can obviously customize this. You will see that you cannot save it once you make a change on it, you are going to be able to save this one as a new flow, as your own flow. You cannot really modify the template. That's why this one looks like um, you cannot save it at this point. So if I go back to the one I built of this template, 
and that's going to be this one, the um, active one. It looks actually pretty much exactly the same. You'll see I have not made any changes here. And the variables are here, approval comments um, and approval decision. You'll see that it's marked available for output. And let me show you the auto launch flow that creates a task. And that's going to be this one here. This one just simply creates a task with the due date of current date. The description comes from the description variable, which is marked available for input. A status is going to be completed always. Subject is going to be opportunity has been approved. And the related to ID is going to be the opportunity ID variable, which is also an input. You can see that here available for input. And this one is also available for input. All right, so now let me actually show you a couple of other features and play around with this a little bit further. Now, first of all, what I want to show you is that we received a new Lightning app called Approvals with this release, Spring 25 release. If you click on Home, this comes with it with its own buttons here, manage all approval workflows, review my approval work items, manage my approval submissions. There are some settings here that takes you to the settings, use standard approvals, send approval work item assignment emails to approvers, and send approval submission status email notification to submitters. So you can actually turn these off and on, right? And if you go back to this app here, it's going to have list views of pending approval submissions and also manage all approval workflows here. You can list all the orchestrations and these are all recorded on custom objects. So you can go to an orchestration, you can see the orchestration runs this one is the record triggered one. I was playing uh, with an auto launch one. So the record triggered one is where I have runs. And you will see that if I go to a particular run, I can see whether it's completed, it's in progress, or it's in error status. And under related lists, I see even more detail. The orchestration stage runs, step runs, orchestration run logs, work items, who received it, who was this assigned to. Everything is recorded, reportable. There is a, a great audit trail here, right? You know, you can see transparently what you have in terms of approvals happening in your org. And um, you can also go to orchestrations, by the way, you know, you'll see here in your um, waffle menu, the orchestration run, orchestration work items, and the orchestrations, these are going to also hold information for your approvals. So that's, in a nutshell, how the approvals work here, folks. Go ahead, give it a try, and let me know what you think about this new tool, uh, whether you are motivated to implement it in your orgs, and uh, how you plan on using it. Have a great day.